It is most evident that no natural effect can exceed the power of its natural cause. Nothing can give to another more than it hath in itself. And it is as clear that whatsoever acts naturally acts necessarily. Fire burns to the uttermost of its power. Waters overflow and drown all that they can. Lions and other rapacious and cruel beasts, especially when hungry, tear and devour their prey. And for arbitrary and rational agents, they also act according to the principles and laws of their natures. A wicked man, when his heart is fully set in him, and his will stands in a full bent of resolution, will certainly, if he have power in his hand and opportunity to execute his conceived mischief, give it vent and perpetuate the wicked devices of his heart. For having once conceived mischief and uh, travailing in pain with it according to the course of nature, he must bring it forth as it is in Psalm 7 verse 14. But if any of these inanimate, brutal or rational agents, when there is no natural obstacle uh, or remora, have their power suspended and that when the effect is near the birth and the design at the very article of execution, so that though they would, yet cannot hurt. To what, think you, is this to be assigned and referred? Yet so it hath often been seen, where God's interest hath been immediately concerned in the danger and evil of the event. The sea divided itself in its own channel and made a wall of water on each side to give God's distressed Israel a safe passage, and that not in a calm, but when the waves thereof roared, as it is in Isaiah 51.15. The fire, when blown up to the most intense and vehement flame, had no power to singe one hair of God's faithful witnesses, when at the same instant it had power to destroy their intended executioners at a greater distance. Daniel 3.22 Yea, we find it hath some time been sufficient to consume, but not to torment the body, as in that known instance of blessed Bincham, who told his enemies uh, that flames were to him as a bed of roses. The hungry lions put off their natural fierceness and became gentle and harmless when Daniel was cast among them for a prey. The like account of the church Story gives us of Polycarp and Dionysius uh, Areopagita, whom the fire would not touch, uh, but stood after the manner of a ship's sail, filled with the wind about them. Are these things according to the course of, and law of nature? To what secret and natural cause can they be ascribed? In like manner we find the vilest and fiercest of wicked men have been withheld by an invisible hand of restraint from injuring the Lord's people. By what secret cause in nature was Jeroboam's hand dried up and made inflexible at the same instant it was stretched out against the man of God, 1 Kings 13.4. No wild beast rend and devour their prey more greedily than wicked men would destroy the people of God that dwell among them, were it not for this providential restraint upon them. So the psalmist expresses his case in the words following my text. My soul is among lions, and I lie among them that are set on fire. The disciples were sent forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Matthew 10, 16. It will not avail in this case to object those miraculous events depend only upon scripture testimony, which the atheist is not concluded by. For besides all that may be alleged for the authority of that testimony, which is needless to produce to men uh, that own it, what is it less than every eye sees or may see at this day? Do we not behold a weak, defenceless handful of men wonderfully and, except this way, unaccountably preserved from ruin in the midst of 
potent, enraged and turbulent enemies that fain would but cannot destroy them when as yet no natural impediment can be assigned why they cannot. And if this poses what shall we say when we see events produced in the world for the good of God's chosen by those very hands and means which were intentionally employed for their ruin. These things are as much beside the intentions of their enemies as they are above their own expectations. Yet such things are no rarities in the world. Was not the envy of Joseph's brethren the cursed plot of Haman, and the decree procured by the envy of the princes against Daniel, with many more of the like nature, all turned by a secret and strange hand of providence to their greater advancement and benefit. Their enemies lifted them up to all that honour and preferment they had. Second demand. How is it if the saints' concerns are not ordered by a special divine providence, that natural causes unite and associate themselves for their relief and benefit in so strange a manner as they are found to do. It is undeniably evident that there are marvellous uh, coincidences of providence, confederating and agreeing, as it were, to meet and unite themselves to bring about the good of God's chosen. There is a like face of things showing itself in diverse places at that time when any work for the good of the church is come upon the stage of the world, as when the Messiah, the capital mercy, came to the temple. Then Simeon and Anna were brought thither by providence as witnesses to it. So in Reformation work, when the images were pulled down in Holland, one and the same spirit of zeal possessed them in every city and town that the work was done in a night. He that heedfully reads the history of Joseph's advancement to be Lord of Egypt may number in that story twelve remarkable acts or steps of providence by which he ascended to that honour and authority. If but one of them had failed, in all likelihood the event had done so too. But every one fell in its order, exactly keeping its own time and place. So in the church's deliverance from the plot of Haman, we find no less than seven acts of providence concurring strangely to produce it, as if they had all met by appointment and consent to break that snare for them, one thing so aptly suiting with and making way for another, that every heedful observer must needs conclude this cannot be the effect of causality, but wise counsel. Even as in viewing the accurate structure of the body of a man, the figure, position, and mutual respects of the several members and vessels have convinced some and is sufficient to convince all that it was the effect of divine wisdom and power. In like manner, if the admirable adapting of the means and instruments employed for mercy to the people of God be heedfully considered, who can but confess that as there are tools of all sorts and sizes in the shop of providence, so there is a most skilful hand that uses them, and that they could no more produce such effects of themselves than the axe, saw, or chisel can cut or carve a rude log into a beautiful figure without the hand of a skilful artificer. We find by manifold instances that there are certainly Uh, are strong combinations and predispositions of persons and things to bring about some issue and design for the benefit of the church which themselves never thought of. They had no intelligence, uh, communicate not their counsels to each other, yet meet together and work together as if they did, which is as if ten men should all meet together at one place and in one hour about one and the same business, and that without any appointment betwixt themselves can any question but such a meeting of means and instruments is certainly, though secretly, overruled by some wise invisible agent. Third demand. If the concerns of God's people be not governed by a special providence, 
Whence is it that the most apt and powerful means employed to destroy them are rendered ineffectual and weak, and contemptible means employed for their defence and comfort crowned with success? This could never be if things were wholly swayed by the course of nature. If we judge by that rule, we must conclude the more apt and powerful the means are, the more successful and prosperous must needs be. They must needs be. And where they are inept, weak and contemptible, nothing can be expected from them. Thus reason lays it according to the rules of nature, but providence crosses its hands as Jacob did in blessing the sons of Joseph and orders quite contrary issues and events. Such was the mighty power and deep policy used by Pharaoh to destroy God's Israel that to the eye of reason it was as impossible to survive it as for crackling thorns to abide unconsumed amidst devouring flames by which emblem their miraculous preservation is expressed. Exodus 3, 2. The bush was all in a flame, but no consumption of it. The heathen Roman emperors who made the world tremble and subdued the nations under them have employed all their power and policy against the poor, naked, defenseless church to ruin it, yet could not accomplish it. Revelation 12, 3 and 4. O oh, the seas of blood that heathen Rome shed in ten persecutions, yet the church lives. And when the dragon gave his power to the beast, Revelation 13, 2, i.e. the state of Rome became anti-Christian, O oh, what slaughters! have been made by the beast in all his dominions, so that the Holy Ghost uh, represents him as drunken with the blood of the saints, uh, Revelation 17, 6. And yet all will not do. The gates, i.e. the powers and policies of hell, cannot prevail against it. How manifest is the care and power of providence herein. Had half that power been employed, against any other people it had certainly swallowed them up immediately or in the hundredth part of this time worn them out how soon was the persian monarchy swallowed up by the grecian and that again by the roman diocletian and maximine in the height of uh, their persecution found themselves so baffled by providence that they both resigned the government and lived as private men but in this wonderful preservation, God makes good that promise, Jeremiah thirty eleven. Though I make a full end of all nations, yet will I not make a full end of thee. And that in Isaiah fifty four seventeen, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. On the contrary, how successful have weak and contemptible means been made for the good of the church. Thus, in the first planting of Christianity in the world, by what weak and contemptible instruments was it done? Christ did not choose the eloquent orators or men of authority in the courts of kings and emperors, but twelve poor uh, mechanics and fishermen, and these not sent together in uh, a troop with some to take one country to conquer it and some another. The most ridiculous course in appearance for such a design as could be imagined. And yet in how short a time was the gospel spread and the churches planted by them in the several kingdoms of the world. This the psalmist foresaw by the spirit of prophecy when he said, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength to still the enemy and the avenger. Psalm 8, 2. At the sound of rams, Horns Jericho is delivered into the hands of Israel, Joshua 6.20, by 300 men with their pitchers and lamps, the huge host of Midian is discomfited, Judges 6.19. The Protestants besieged in uh, Bezier in France are delivered by a drunken drummer who, going to his quarters at midnight, rang the alarm bell of the town, not knowing what he did, and just when uh, were their enemies making the assault. And as weak and implorable means have been blessed with success to the church in general, so to the preservation of its particular members also. A spider, by weaving her web over the mouth of an oven, 
shall hide a servant of Christ, uh, de Moulin, from his enemies, who took refuge there in the bloody uh, partisan massacre. A hen shall sustain another many days, uh, at the same time by lodging her egg every day in the place where he had hid himself from the cutthroats. Examples might be easily multiplied in the case, but the truth is too plain and obvious to the observation of all ages to need them. And can we but acknowledge a divine and special providence overruling these matters when we see the most apt and potent means for the church's ruin frustrated and the most silly and contemptible means succeeded and prospered for its good? Fourth demand. If all things be governed by the course of nature and force of natural causes, how then comes it to pass that men are turned like a bowl of rub out of the way of evil unto which they were driving on with full speed? Good men have been engaged in the way to their own ruin and knew it not, but providence hath met them in the way and preserved them by strange diversions, the meaning of which they understood not, until the event discovered it. Paul lay bound at Caesarea, the high priest and chief of the Jews, request Festus that he might be brought bound to Jerusalem, having laid wait in the way to kill him. But Festus, though ignorant of the plot, utterly refuses it, but chooses rather to go with him to Caesarea and judge him there. By this rub, their bloody design is frustrated. Acts 25, 3 and 4. Posidonius in the life of Augustine tells us that the good father going to teach the people of a certain town took a guide with him to show him the way. The guide mistook the usual route and ignorantly fell into a bypath by which means he escaped ruin by the hands of the bloody Donatist who knowing his intention waylaid him to kill him in the road. As And as memorable and wonderful are these rubs and diversions wicked men have met with in the way of, perpetu- of the perpetuating, perpetuating the evils conceived and intended in their own hearts. Laban and Esau come against Jacob with mischievous purposes, but no sooner are they come nigh him, but the shackles of restraint are immediately clapped upon them both, so that their hands cannot perform their enterprises. Balaam runs greedily for reward to curse Israel, but meets with an unexpected check at his very outset, and though that stops him not, but he essayed every way to do them mischief, yet he still finds himself fettered by an effectual bond of restraint that he can no way shake off. Numbers 22, 25-38 Saul, the high priest's bloodhound, breeds out threatenings against the church and goes with a bloody commission towards Damascus to hail the poor flock of Christ to the slaughter. But when he comes nigh the place, he meets an unexpected stop in the way by which the mischief is not only diverted, but himself converted to Christ. Acts 9, 1 to 4. Who can but see the finger of God in these things? If there be not an overruling providence, this is the fifth demand, uh, if there be not an overruling providence ordering all things for the good of God's people, how comes it to pass that the good and evil which is done to them in this world is accordingly repaid into the bosoms of them that are instrumental therein? One, how clear is it to every man's observation that the kindnesses and benefits any have done to the Lord's people have been rewarded with full measure into their bosoms. The Egyptian midwives refused to obey Pharaoh's inhuman command and save the male children of Israel. For this the Lord dealt well with them and built them houses, Exodus 1.21. The Shunammite was hospitable and careful for Elisha, and God recompensed it with the desirable enjoyment of a son, 2 Kings 4, 9, 17, 31. Rahab hid the spies and was exempted from the common destruction for it, Hebrews eleven thirty one. 31. Uh, Publius, the chief uh, man of the island Melita, courteously received and lodged Paul after his shipwreck. The Lord speedily repaid him for that kindness and healed his father, 
who lay sick at that time of a bloody flux and fever. Acts 28, 7 and 8. In like manner, we find the evils done to God's people have been repaid by a just retribution to their enemies. Pharaoh and the Egyptians were cruel enemies to God's Israel and designed the ruin of their poor innocent babies. And God repaid it in smiting all the firstborn of Egypt in one night. Exodus 12, 19. Haman erected a gallows 50 cubits high for good Mordecai and God so ordered it that he himself and his ten sons were hanged on it. And indeed it was but meet that he should eat the fruit of that tree which he himself had planted. Esther 7 verse 10. Ahithophel plots against David and gives counsel like an oracle how to procure his fall. And that very counsel like a sure charge gun, recoils upon himself and procures his ruin. For seeing his good counsel rejected, good politically, not morally, it was now easy for him to guess at the issue, and so at his own fate. Second Samuel 70 and verse 23. Charles the Ninth most inhumanely made the very canals of Paris to stream with Protestant blood, and soon after he died miserably, his blood streaming from all parts of his body. Stephen Gardner, that burnt so many of God's dear servants to ashes, was himself so scorched up by a terrible inflammation that his very tongue was black and hung out of his mouth and in dreadful torments ended his wretched days. Maximinus, uh, that cruel emperor who set forth his uh, proclamation engraven in brass for the utter abolishing of the Christian religion was speedily smitten, like Herod with a dreadful judgment, swarms of lice preying upon his entrails, and causing such a stench that his physicians could not endure to come nigh him, and for refusing it were slain. Hundreds of like instances might easily be produced to confirm this observation, and who can but see by these things that verily there is a God that judgeth in the earth? Yea, so exact have been the retributions of providence to the enemies of the church that not only the same persons but the same members that have been the instruments of mischief have been made the subjects of wrath. The same arm which Jeroboam stretched out to smite the prophet God smites. The emperor Aurelian, when he was ready to subscribe the edict for the persecution of the Christians, was suddenly cramped in his knuckles that he could not write. Mr. Greenhill, in his exposition upon Ezekiel 11.13, tells his uh, auditory that there was one then present in the congregation who was an eyewitness of a woman scoffing at another for purity and holy walking, who had her tongue stricken immediately with the palsy and died thereof within two days. Henry II of France, in a great rage against a Protestant counsellor, committed him to the hands of of one of his nobles to be imprisoned and that with these words that he would not see him that he would see him burnt with his own eyes but mark the righteous providence of god within a few days after the same nobleman with a lance put into his hands by the king did at a tilting match run and run the said king into one of his of his eyes whereof he died yea providence hath made the very place of sinning the place of punishment, 1 Kings twenty one nineteen. In the place where the dogs licked the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood. And it was exactly fulfilled, 2 Kings 9, 26. Thus Topheth is made a burying place for the Jews until there is no room to bury. And that was the place where they offered up their sons to Moloch, Jeremiah 7, 31, 32. The story of Nightingale, is generally known, which Mr. Fox relates how he fell out of the pulpit and break his neck whilst he was abusing that scripture, 1 John 1.10. And thus the scriptures are made good by providence. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it shall return upon him. Proverbs 26.27 and Matthew 7.2 With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Objection. If any yet say that these things may fall out casually, that 
Many thousands of the church's enemies have died in peace and their end been like that of other men. Solution. We answer with Augustine, if no sin were punished here, no providence would be believed. And if every sin should be punished here, no judgment would be expected. But that none may think that think that these events to be merely casual and accidental, we yet further demand. Six demand. If these things be merely casual, how is it that they square and agree so exactly with the scriptures in all particulars? We read Amos 3, 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? If two men travel in one road, it is likely they are agreed to go to the same place. Providences and scriptures go all one way, and if they seem at any time to go diverse or contrary ways, be sure they will meet at the journey's end. There is an agreement betwixt them so to do. Doth God miraculously suspend the power of natural causes as in the first demand was opened? Why, this is no accidental thing, but what harmonizes with the word. Isaiah uh, 43, verse 2, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Do natural causes unite and associate themselves for the good of God's people? Why, this is no more than what is contained in the promises and is but the fulfilling of that scripture, 1 Corinthians 3.22, all is yours for ye are, for ye are Christ's, i.e. the use, benefit, and service of all the creatures are for you, as your need shall require. Are the most apt and powerful means employed for their ruin frustrated? Who can but see the scriptures fulfilled in uh, and expounded by such providences? See Isaiah 45, 15 to 17, and uh, chapter 8, verses 7 to 10, expounded by Second Kings 18, verse 17. See you at any time a robe of providence diverting the cause of good men from the falling into evil, or wicked men from committing evil. How loudly do such providences proclaim the truth and certainty of the scriptures, which tells us that the way of man is not in himself, neither is it in him that walks to direct his steps, Jeremiah 10.23, and that in Proverbs 16.9, a man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. Do you see adequate retributions made to those that injure or or befriend the people of God? Why, when you see all the kindness and love they have shown the saints returned with an overplus into their bosoms? How is it possible but you must see the accomplishment of those scriptures in such providences? Isaiah 32, 8, 2 Corinthians 9, 6. The liberal soul deviseth liberal things, and by liberal things he shall stand. And when you see the evils men have done or intended to do to the Lord's people recoiling upon themselves, He is perfectly blind that sees not the harmony such providences bear with these scriptures. Psalm 140, 11 and 12 and 7, 14 to 16 and 9, verse 16. Oh, what exact proportions do providences and scriptures hold? Little do men take notice of it. Why did Cyrus, contrary to all rules of state policy, freely dismiss the captives but to fulfill that scripture? Isaiah forty five thirteen, so that it was well observed by one that as God hath stretched out the expan- the expansum or firmament over the natural, so he hath stretched out his word over the rational world. And as the creatures on earth are influenced by those heavenly bodies, so are all creatures in the world influenced by the word and do infallibly fulfil it when they design to cross it. Seventh demand. If these things be contingent, how is it that they fall out in such remarkable nicks and junctures of time, which makes them so greatly observable to all that consider them? We find a multitude of providences so timed to a minute, that had they fallen out never so little sooner or later, they had signified but little to what they uh, now they do. Certainly it cannot be uh, casualty or uh, casualty but counsel so that uh, so exactly nix the opportunity contingencies keep to no rules how remarkable to this purpose was the tidings brought to saul 
that the Philistines had invaded the land, 1 Samuel 23, 27, just as he was ready to grasp the prey. The angel calls to Abraham and shows him another sacrifice just when his hand was giving the fatal stroke to Isaac, Genesis 22, 10, 11. A well of water is discovered to Hagar just when she had left the child as not able to see his death, Genesis 29, 16, and 19. Rabshaka meets with a blasting providence. Here is a rumor that frustrated his design just when ready to give the shock against Jerusalem. Isaiah 37, 7 and 8. So when Haman's plot against the Jews was ripe and all things ready for execution, on that night could not the king sleep. Esther 6, 1. When the horns are ready to give to gore Judah, immediately uh, carpenters are prepared to fray them away. Zechariah 1, 18 uh, to 21. How remarkable was the relief of uh, Rochelle by a shoal of fish uh, that came into the harbour when they were ready to perish with famine, such as they never observed before nor after that time. Mr. Dodd could not go to bed one night but had a strong impulse to visit, though unseasonably a neighbour gentleman, and as just as he came he meets him at the door with uh, his halter in his pocket just going to hang himself. Dr. Tate and his wife in the Irish Rebellion flying through the woods with a sucking child was which was ready to expire the mother going to rest it upon a rock puts her hand upon a bottle of warm milk by which it was preserved a good woman from whose mouth i received it being driven to a great extremity all supplies failing was exceedingly plunged into unbelieving doubts and fears not seeing when supply should come when lo at that very time by turning some things in a chest unexpectedly lights upon a piece of gold which supplied her present wants till God opened another door of supply. If these things fall out uh, casually, how is it that they observe time so very exactly, as that is become proverbial in Scripture, uh, Genesis uh, 22:14, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Eighth demand. Lastly, were these things casual and contingent, how can it be that they should fall out so immediately upon and constantly to the prayers of the saints, so that in many providences they are able to discern a very clear answer to their prayers and are sure they have the petitions they asked of him, 1 John five fifteen. Thus, when the sea divided itself just upon Israel's cry to heaven, Exodus 14.10, when so signal a victory is given to Asa immediately upon the pathetical cry to heaven, Help us, O Lord our God, Second Chronicles 14, 11 and 12, when Ahithophel shall go and hang himself just upon that prayer of, da- of distressed David, Second Samuel fifteen thirty one, when Haman shall fall and his plot be broken just upon the fast kept by Mordecai and Esther, Esther uh, four sixteen. Our own speed in his history of Britain tells us that Richard the first besieged the castle with his army. They offered to surrender if he would save their lives. He refuses and threatens to hang them all. Upon this, uh, an arrow blaster charged his bow his bow with uh, a square arrow, making uh, first his prayer to God that he would direct his shot and deliver the innocent from oppression. It struck the king himself, whereof he died. And they were delivered. Abraham's servant prayed for success and see how it was answered. Genesis 24:45. Peter was cast into prison and prayer was made for him by the church. And see the event, Acts 7, 5, 6, 7 and 12. I could easily add to these the wonderful examples of the return of prayers which was observed in Luther and Dr. Winter in Ireland and many more. But I judge it needless because most Christians have a stock of experience of their own and are well assured that many of the providences that befall them are and can be no other than the return of their prayers. And now who can be dissatisfied in this point that wisely consider these things? Must we not conclude, as it is in Job uh, 36 verse 7, He withdraweth not his eye from the righteous, and as Second Chronicles 16.9, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro through the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them 
whose heart is perfect towards him. His providences proclaim him to be a God-hearing prayers.